Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Today's Tuesday, January 29th. I can't believe it. Uh, almost the end of the month. I'm here with the home staging guru, <laughs> Joseph Sipp. We've been having a great conversation and that's why we're a little late. So uh, let us know you can hear us and see us. Give me a thumbs up once you guys pop on. Uh, ben Gilbert's on, what's up Ben? We got a thumbs up so we can hear you. Anna's on, what's up guys? Uh, I'm super excited, Nick, yes. hey, Nick. I'm super excited to have you on the show. Uh, we've been trying to get this together for a while. It's been my schedule. Uh, but you have such a great story and I think people need to hear it. Thank you. Uh, I want people to hear it. And so that's that was the delay. So welcome. Thank welcome. you. Jason, Thank you for having me. Look, hey, Jason, Jason just came. We were just talking about you, Jason. <laughs> yes. Shirley, we love you. So lots of hearts. You can see it going on. This is another reason why I love it. It's immediate attention back. Yes. You get the feedback. Uh, all right. So. Home staging, obviously, we want to talk about systematic home staging. Hey, Wendy, uh, we want to talk about your story because you are a young man. You're a young adult, and your, your beginnings of this business that has blossomed and grown, I um, mean, when I think of home staging, I only think of you, and that has nothing to do with you paying me under the table. <laughs> that has to do with your name and the amount of social media and your great reputation you have in town. Thank so, you, I appreciate um, it. Joe, I'm watching, you can't drink, man. <laughs> I have He's water. not, he's I got, got water. water. right here. <laughs> Notice he didn't say Ted, because that's not happening. Um, all right, so tell us a little bit about you. So my name is Joseph Sipp, uh, and I own Systematic Home Staging. It is a home staging company in Orlando, but we kind of go anywhere our clients need us. So uh, we branch out to Lake, Lakeland, Lake Nona, Melbourne, anywhere you guys need us, we'll drive our trucks to. Uh, we are nationally awarded as one of the top five professional staging companies worldwide and nationally here in Orlando. So yeah, I mean, it's a great industry. It's a lot of fun. And how long, did, how long ago did you start? So I started when I was 16. Uh, I was in high school. How does that work? work? So how do you get the motivation, the inclination to go, all right, I want to create a staging business? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've always had that entrepreneur mindset. I started a pet sitting business when I was 10 and then I got rid of that at the age of 15. So I've always had that mindset as I want to own my own business. I want to be on my own time schedule. I want to do what I want. Um, so that's always been in my mindset and my dad, he owns his own practice, he's a dentist, so he owns his own business. So just growing up in that atmosphere of having a role model that wakes up at 6.30 in the morning, doesn't come home until 5, you know what I mean? Being there for his clients, you right. know? Seeing that, like being raised in that family, my family, my mom is the same way, she's been a big influence on my brothers, you know, just having that family around you. And the atmosphere that you're raised in kind of, I personally think is what got me to where I am today. I believe that. Now you're, now that, that explains your pearly whites. Okay. <laughs> that makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, so when you went to your parents and said, I want to create a home mm -hmm. staging business. Had you had real estate experience? What had, what motivated you to choose that? Yeah, so my parents did investment properties when I was younger and I used to like bring like my bed spread to the property, lay it out on the ground in like a little like square to show people that a queen bed could fit here. You know, I had no clue what I was doing. I would like hang pieces of artwork that I would find just on the wall, just random stuff and people would have the feedback of, hey, like that actually worked. You know, and I was like eight, nine years old and I was doing that. So. I've always had it, you know, I've always changed my room around. I had a family room set up in my room. One day it would be down in the <laughs> bonus room, then I would have something else up there. I'd be painting my walls myself. I would be getting new pillows for my mom's room to put my pillows in her room. So it was just back and forth, you know, of having just the inventory at my house to just play with. And then um, Thanksgiving of 2017, my aunt has a staging company in Tampa. And she always used to know, she knows that I love doing this. I designed like my dad's friend's houses or my mom's friend's houses. And she was like, why don't you put that to use? You know, start a staging company. And I was like, what is staging? Like, I've never heard of that. Like, what are you talking about? She's like, well, I've been in the business for nine years, had no clue that she was doing staging. And she loves it, you know? So I looked into it, I researched her company, kind of read up on it, looked at some organizations, HSRA and IHOSP, and I started my company and it just, took off so that's kind of how so it I mean that's amazing because you started at seven you, did you form the corporation at 17 17 yeah all right so that's a process yeah, 17 so I think. I don't even remember. it's only been a year folks. it's only been a year <laughs> uh, but you have made such an impact so we were talking earlier about all right you've got this passion you obviously are talented at it then you create the company how do you convince us 
old folks. Um, seasoned. Seasoned. Oh, I like seasoned. That's so much better. Uh, seasoned folks to trust somebody out the gate, 17, young. Um, how did you get somebody to believe in you in the beginning? What, what, were, what did you tell them? What did you share with them, show them in order for them to give you a shot? Yeah, I mean, it was very difficult. You know, being a young, young entrepreneur, being 17, 16, 17 years old, when you can't get your own LLC, you know, you can't get insurance. So finding the pieces, having your family behind you to help sign off on that as a co-signer, just having those pieces was a huge part, you know, because to show, to go to a listing presentation or a staging consult and say, hey, I'm licensed, I'm insured, I am a, an accredited staging, staging professional, you know, I have my accreditation, I am a professional, you know, to have that behind you as an ASP is huge, you know, to go to someone instead of just saying, hey, I'm some 17 year old high school kid, but hey, I'm a professional home staging company, here's my proof of insurance, here's my, you know, my liability insurance, everything else I have to show them on the console for the first few, they were like, you know what, this kid means business, you right. know? So yeah, it was very difficult, you know, there was a few clients that like were very hesitant not to pay me and it was like, I'll pay you at closing or I'll pay you once you do the well, job. Well, they were afraid you were just playing around. Yeah, exactly. Most no, people at your definitely. age, I mean, I'm, I'm 35. <laughs> And I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. So most people at your age, you're trying to, you're just feeling your way around. So you already had the thought, you already had the passion, you already had the, the direction and the mindfulness to, to form a corporation to get accredited. Yeah. How was that process? Because you're underage trying to get accredited. So that was difficult too. So, cause I was 17 or 16, I don't even remember my, the days and months and years kind of go into one now. So um, I was, 17, I don't even remember, whatever age I was at, I had to fly up to North Carolina or Georgia, yeah, North Carolina, I had to get the association to help me get a hotel room, and I had to help them, like, preach to, like, their owner, saying, hey, this kid's the youngest home stager in America, currently still, I'm actually in the youngest home stager, to get accredited, and it was just a very long process, you know, to show them, like, hey, I want to do this, I want to be this, because I never had anyone, they've what had- What did you have to do for accreditation? It was a week long course. During my spring break, I went up to Atlanta or North Carolina, somewhere up there, one of those states, and I got accredited for a week long. It was like in classroom two days and then off on a job site for one day. So, yeah. And so you, so you did it, you get accredited, yep. then you open the corporation. So you get your first client, mm -hmm. you get your first realtor to say, all right, I will trust you, Joseph Sipp. Uh, from systematic home staging to do the staging for my house. Mm -hmm. What is that like? What is the process? So did the you freak process. out? Did you go, oh my God, I have a paying customer. Yeah, Here honestly, we go. Yeah, that's exactly Game what on. it was. I was like, oh my God, what do I do? Like, where do I go get this stuff? Like, I didn't think it was actually gonna happen. You know, I kind of did it as like for fun at first and then it took off. You know, I was like, what do I do? Where do I go? I went to Home Goods, <laughs> the worst decision of my life to go there because you walk out with three carts of furniture, right. you know, where I can get it cheaper somewhere else. So. It's just something like those things you live and learn, you know, like you kind of fake it until you make it. I tell myself that at the beginning of just figure out how to do it, take furniture from your own house. You know, like I was lugging my mattress into this property in my brother's <laughs> Ford pickup truck, you know, I love it. finding a way to do it and getting it done. The client was happy with it. So well, of course the client yeah. was happy because look at your growth. So you're a year plus in two years, yeah. two years plus in and you have trucks now you have so did you have a plan and let's talk about where you're at now did you have a plan when you first started or did you just go okay i want to be in business i want to do yeah. this because you have he has a he has a i'm going to say fleet it's probably not but a fleet he has yeah. multiple trucks yes. so that's a fleet <laughs> uh how do you do that in two years and what were you thinking after the first one you got it one and done and how did you promote that so you could grow yeah i mean social media is a huge thing like ted and i were talking about before we went live Social media is huge. We're on social media right now, you know? So just social media is a huge thing to promote. You know, hey, we did a house, here's this. And then that realtor would tag us and then his realtor friends would call me, you know? So that's honestly how you first, I got started and got my name out there. Um, as to the fleets and stuff like that, I didn't have a plan. I had no plan at all. I just did it for fun at the beginning, just thinking, oh, let me try it out and see what happens. Just like my pet sitting business, tried it out and then got rid of it. So. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know what I was getting into. I had no clue. And then 
it just took off and then we were running U-Hauls every day. My dad was driving them to work and then I would drive to that, pick it up and then go to the job site because I couldn't drive it to school or I would. So um, that's, right. that's kind of how it started off. Like yeah, that. no, they did not allow that. <laughs> so um, that's kind of like honestly how it started off and then it was like, you know what, we're getting a U-Haul every day. It's at our house every single day. Why don't we buy a truck? So we bought our first truck and then we were like, hey, this is driving around town, why don't we get it wrapped? So then we got our logo on it, and then people saw our logo, took pictures of it, tagged us on Facebook, looked up who we are, were. That's how we first got started, and then now we grew even more. Now we need a bigger truck, so. That's right, you got yeah, bigger we just got a new truck. Yeah, we have a 20-foot truck now, um, and then we were like, hey, I can't put my stagers in a truck, and I don't want them driving their own car, so then, we got a transit van. So now our stagers have their own car, our logistics have their own vehicle. Um, so we have about two to three vehicles out on the road every day, dispatch, um, and then getting that. And then it, now I was like, you know what? I need people to help me. I can't be doing this all during school. Correct. So we hired our first employee. Um, How was that? Hiring our first employee. Yes, was, so that must have, so you were, were you 17 or 18 when you hired your first employee? 17 probably. Yeah, so yeah. you're hot. So somebody's coming in and interviewing with, yeah. with you. What was that like? I've been very lucky. I love to say that with this whole process. My employees respect me, you know, which was very difficult at the beginning because I was so worried. You know, like I'm your boss. I'm 17 years old and I'm telling 30, 35 year old people what to do. You know, I never thought they would respect that or listen to me. Um, but fortunately they did. You know, I think they respected the morals that we have in the company, Absolutely. like represent or you know, represent systematic. And I think they respected that um, to train them. You know, it was very easy, a very easy process to show them on the weekends because I was in school during the week. So just showing them the ropes and things like That's that, insane. which honestly, it wasn't that difficult. A lot of people thought that they wouldn't respect me or anything like that. And I honestly think showing your, you know what I mean, showing your team that you are a young kid, you have fun, you know what I mean? You're not a stickler on job sites. You're not hey, I need it this way, this way, this way. It's like, we have fun with it. We listen right. to music in the warehouse. So, you know, we just have a good time. And I think and another thing back to that on the social media is promoting that on social media where we're not a corporate company where we don't have fun. You know, we do have fun. You have to have fun to produce a good product in my mind. So You have a lot of fun and you can tell it mm -hmm. in your Facebook Live videos and on your social media. Yeah. So you mentioned it, you talked a little bit about social media before, but when you're doing what you're doing, um, you have to be on social media. Yes. You have to be able to show yep. uh, what's going on because that's such a visual thing. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to show people visually because they can't always go out to the house that exactly. you've staged. So talk a little bit about what you do on social media. Talk about your Facebook Live yeah. and why that's important. Definitely. So we do, for every property, how we kind of set ourselves apart is we do a free Facebook Live video. So we streamline your property to over a few thousand people, you know, with our friend group, our realtor's friend group, our team's friend group, my personal friend group, our business page. So just those, all of those transitioning that we have about 3,000 viewers that we can streamline that to that you as your real estate agent may not have in your friend group, you know? So just a whole other group of people that are streamlining to your property, which is huge. Um, so that's a huge thing. Properties sell literally before they hit the market because they found their property on our Facebook Live video, which I think is pretty unique, that's you know? That's awesome. Yeah, we had a few, uh, one of the properties we had our Christmas party at, and it sold from our Christmas party. One of our clients went through and it didn't even hit the market. So just little things like that. We also do Instagram where we stream on that to over a few hundred people as well. Instagram videos, you know, your stories kind of keeping track, you know, like people are reaching out to us and said, Hey, we're, you didn't do any properties today. Where are they? Well, we don't have paying attention. Time. Yeah. You know, you're, you're giving that suspense as to before here's the before video. Now they're going to be following and waiting for the after video, you know? Right. So just showing them, like before, now a few hours later, here's the after product of like, holy cow, you totally transformed that home. Social media is huge, honestly. I mean, you've, but you, you're of that generation yes. that utilizes it, grew up with it. So the, um, what did you say, season, season the seasons yes. <laughs> uh, realtors, do you have to do a lot to convince them on how much social media, or is that just part of how you present to them? Yeah, so when I go to listing or consults, I present what we offer, you know, I say, how are you utilizing your property? What is your marketing efforts that you're putting into this property? Well, I'm here right now. You obviously know how important staging is, but why don't we go that extra mile? You know, I'm gonna do your Facebook Live videos. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And they're like, hold on, what is all that first <laughs> off? Well, then That's I true. educate them on what exactly is that? You know, what exactly is a YouTube channel? How is that utilizing your listing? You know, so just little things like that for your seasoned agents. We've seen realtors and staging companies and all companies, you know, honestly, 
we are seasoned, we don't need uh, social media, we don't need that stuff, and then all of a sudden, a younger real estate agent or a younger home stager, anyone, you know, a younger lawyer comes in town and they blast social media because that's what they've been, they've been raised by that, you Absolutely. know? And it's like, oh my gosh, all the people are going to this company because we give so much more for a free cost. So, and then how do huge. you, how do you, once you've got them in there, mm -hmm. what's the process of, and maybe tell us some of your, I don't know if you can share them because I don't want people to, to hear it and say, why do you, <laughs> because I think, I think people think they can do it on their own. To me, no. what staging, that staging is one of those things you should never do on your no. own. <laughs> it's a lot like taking pictures. Yes. Uh, it's a lot like drone footage. Yep. You really should hire someone who knows what they're doing. Um, I teach a class on social media to realtors, and one of the biggest, I always post the pictures of all of the bad things, the things mm -hmm. you shouldn't do that actually showed up on MLS or yeah. showed up on a flyer. It's, it's crazy. So Honestly. when you go in, and then how do you take their, how do you take the realtors, or or how does the process go when you're actually trying to, to, to show to or to develop? Yeah. Yes. I mean, the main thing is, is that with real estate, the way we're seeing the trend starting to go with the market, you need to surround yourself with people. You know, you can't be a stage agent. That's what we call them. A real estate agent, that's a stage agent. You can't do both. Agent. You really can't. That's awesome. That's just, for example, <laughs> how I show my team is I'm the tree trunk and I have people that help me. You know, I have my operations manager. I have our marketing team, I have our stagers, our movers, our photographer, our designer. We have all those people that surround me as the tree trunk that work with me to produce a good product. So just like with a real estate agent, you're the tree trunk. You know, you're the one from start to finish of getting that property from for sale to sold. Now branch out, have people that work around you to help you. You know, let's have a photographer, let's have a videographer, let's have a cleaning company, let's have a staging company right here, right. systematic, a staging company where you surround those people, partner with us, where when you go to that listing presentation, you say, hey, this is what I offer to you. I have all these people surrounded. These are part of my team. Where another agent that doesn't have that, they're coming to the listing presentation saying, hey, it's a one-man show. You know, I can do the staging. I can do all that. Where you rather see a one-man show or one-woman show with nine other people that stand behind them to right. produce that product. Right. So that's how I promote it to all my clients is saying, hey, you need to focus on getting the property sold. Because the one thing is that if you're worrying about staging photos and all that, the last thing your client's gonna think is, are they actually gonna try to sell my home or are they gonna be worried about managing all this stuff behind the scenes? So partner with a company like Systematic and like any other company that will take that stress off of you and make you as a real estate agent shine. Because so, that's what it does. Yeah. It allows, because the, the market, you know, it's up and down, it's fickle. I mean, I feel, I feel like it's a good market. I'm hearing the end of January is much better. That's what we're feeling. Oh, crazy. <laughs> but here's what happens. I think a lot of people believe that staging is outside of their budget. Yeah. Can you talk talk about that? So honestly, staging, when I broke into the market, I was like, I'm gonna do the Amazon effect. You know, look at these stores closing from Amazon. You can get it within one day, you know, for half the cost. You can order, order in bulk, get it for a good price. So that's the way I broke into the market and said, you know, I'm gonna have the Amazon effect on staging. So these realtors that have been in the market that have used staging, they're used to seeing five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars double digits of money for staging, which is right outrageous you're not going to make that back on your commission costs so the way i broke into it is i found out from the beginning of my time of where can i get the best quality of furniture for the lowest price wholesale you know so from the beginning i've been ordering from wholesale so our base package starts off at 1600 and then goes up from there so breaking into the market and spending hey 1600 that's low on commission you know that's maybe one percent or two percent of commission or maybe even sometimes half of a percent depending on right. the quality of the listing so Honestly, it's just showing your clients that, hey, you can surround yourself with people for a good price, a good quality, with free photos. You know, you're getting so much extra stuff that you're not paying for, so. Juliana says, my two in. favorite guys. We were just talking about you. <laughs> yes, we Crystal were. wants to know where's your pup. He's at the warehouse, I couldn't bring him. What kind of pup do you have? A French Bulldog. Oh, nice, A baby, nice. a little puppy. A little pup. <laughs> Yeah, you couldn't bring him up here, although we no. could sneak him in. Yeah, yeah I could put him in my bag. I love that you told what your start price is. A lot of people come on here, and I know this isn't a, we're not QVC, we're not trying to <laughs> QVC Joseph, but I love that people that you talk about that mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people are afraid to give their price. You know what your price point is. You already have evaluated it. You know where you can start. Yeah. You know what that includes. And a lot of times people go into negotiations, go in and talk about it, and they just want to dance around it. They don't want to talk about the bottom line. Exactly. So I love that you you did that and just said it out loud, which I didn't coach you on and yeah, I didn't no, have to. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just, it's true. Our package starts off at 16 and then goes up from there. 
depending on you know how big the home is. Every property is different. Obviously, that basic package isn't going to fit for a million dollar home. You have to be more customized. But one thing that we always suggest to our realtors before you go in for a listing presentation, send us pictures of the property, show us what you're getting into as a listing agent or a selling agent and show us what it is you know show me show me the property we'll work up a quote so when you get there you're one step ahead you know you're going to be that real estate agent saying this is my team here's the staging quote here's how much it's going to be with let's move forward you know right. that one extra step that plus one we call with our clients is showing them a quote showing them a hard number while you're at the listing presentation before even getting that job so now how hard is it to go in like you, you've got a list you, the mm -hmm. agent brings you a listing and you have to you have to go into the house you have to yeah. figure out what's going on now are the do uh, do the sellers get offended because you want to change this up do this how does that work I, yeah so, I, w I would imagine there's got to be some challenges so to the that. one thing is that a lot of real estate agents you not they don't lose the listing but to have be a real estate agent and selling someone's home and then go in and talk all this negativity about their home they're gonna second guess listing with you because they're gonna feel like you're gonna be presenting that That's negative energy point. to the people coming through as to, oh, well, the chandelier is outdated or you can get a better price on that. So having a third party eye, we have over like 150 continuing education credits on talking to sellers as to why do this, why do that. So to have a professional that you partner with to bring in, you know, to make you as a real estate agent look one up, that plus one we call that, is huge, it's priceless. You know, it's honestly just priceless. So you as a real estate agent, secure that listing, get those papers signed, and then send me in to give all the bad news, the very bad news people call me. Right. So um, it's just do that. How do you handle it, it with, the, with the seller? So this, you go in and you have to deliver bad news. Yes. Hey, so, your, your 70s shag carpet, mm -hmm. we have to figure out what to do with that. Like, That's, I, I would love imagine, doing that. Do you used to talk yeah. about that? So, I would imagine that would be a challenge, but yeah. maybe you, you turn so it around. That's our uh, walk and talk. That's one of the services we offer for lived in properties. So the way we do it is we walk in, we ask them, hey, what's going on? Why are you moving? What's the reason? Well. I'm moving and I want to sell my home quick. Perfect. Well, I have them right there and saying, you want to sell your home quick. So I'm going to give you a list of things that you need to do. You know, you just told me you want to sell your home for top dollar and for quick. So I'm going to tell you how you can do it. And they're like, what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Tell me what I can do. Cause now I already have them. I know what they want. I know they want to sell for top dollar for the best time on market. Now I'm going to tell them how they need to go from A to Z, that action plan. Right. So I just walk through, I say, you know what? When was the last time you sat in this chair? It doesn't look like you sit here that often. Well, that's where I read my book. Well, you know what? Why don't you read your book in your family room or get some fresh air on the outside? The patio, because during when you're listing your home, it's a stressful time. And you don't want to be captured in your property during a stressful time. Get out, nice. get some fresh air. And they're like, wow, yeah, I don't need that chair. You're almost you know? like a bartender psychologist. Yeah, no, staging person. is totally with the mind, <laughs> That's a honestly. Yeah, psychology, definitely, it really is. But you're you're presenting it in a way that's non-threatening, that's mm -hmm. not negative. That makes sense. And that makes sense mm -hmm. to them. That's because you've got the eye for it, you guys have the talent for yeah. it. Yeah. Because I, I know when we've listed a home before, when somebody's come in and told us all the bad things we had in the house, I was like, well, that's kind of offensive. Yeah, Even though exactly. I know they're right, it's about how you present it yeah, to it's, people. Yeah, it's teaching. You know, like I'm a teacher, nine to five. You know, I, I draw on my listing presentations and I tell them why we don't need this and I explain it. You know, I say, this seems to go and they're like, well, why? Well, the reason why is because here we go. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the reason and that's why it needs to go, you know? So if you have a staging company that you're partnering with where they just go in and give your client all the bad news and not explain why, it's gonna reflect back onto you as a real estate agent as to you're kind of taking three steps backwards. You know, right. you're looking good to go three steps forward with staging, but then you're taking seven, eight steps backwards where it doesn't work, you know? How do you handle the large homes? So I would imagine the large homes must be a challenge. You've got more rooms, you've yes. got, you, you either have a big empty space, you're dealing with a, a, a blank canvas, yep. or you've got all of this stuff that you're trying to figure out how to maneuver around. Yeah. So that must be a little more taxing. Yeah, no, it really is. We just did one this morning before I came here. Um, it was four family rooms, two dining rooms, an wow. office, and it was it was huge. You know, the, it was completely empty, and it was a blank canvas. You know, it was um, gray floors, white walls, white kitchen. So it's like you need to spruce that up with some color. So I personally love doing the bigger homes because they're more fun. You know, you can put better pieces in there. You can put the higher end pieces, the more glamorous pieces in there. Even though we do treat all of our homes the same, you know, we put the same quality in every property, sure. but just that one extra, you know, we call that the glam package as to more of the mixed like metals, that. more of the mirrors, more of the heavier artwork that we can put in. I love doing the higher end homes. Some people, 
don't like it just because it is a lot more work and a lot more inventory of two trucks backed up to the garage, one in the front yard, one in the backyard, you know, getting it in and out and just, just strategically, systematically, I should say, placing the truck as to this is that, this goes to this room, okay, now making sure everything's labeled and inventory, I love that. which that's the hard part. Color coordinating is huge. So Larissa says, I love when you approach them with solutions to the issues. Um, this is not just this is a problem, yes. right? So that's what you're talking about. Yeah. So when you go in, what, what goes on in your mind? Do you walk in and do you do a full walkthrough on your own first? Do you bring your whole team? Do you do you do it with the seller and with the realtor? How does the process work? When yeah, you go in? so for a vacant property, I just go in myself. The realtor sometimes will meet me there or provide me with a lockbox code. And I just walk through, you know, it's just me. I don't need the whole team to be there. I go through, I take pictures of all the rooms and then we're very high on technology, you know? So I have my iPad, I have my Apple Pencil, I take the pictures, I can draw exactly where I want the furniture pieces and I can present that to the client. You know, I can say, hey, this is what your property is gonna look like after we come and stage it. And they're like, oh my gosh. And then at cloud bases to our office, so they can get a quote worked up while I'm on the job site. So by the time I'm leaving your property or 45 minutes to an hour of me leaving, you'll get an email with a quote. So wow. it's just partnering with that staging company that's on that technology level where it's not like, oh, well, hey, Joseph, it's systematic, I never got a quote. You'll get that quote within an hour or so of me leaving, which, you know, just to have that right there presented to the client the same day so we can get you staged and sold. It's just the, the technology behind it and the social media is huge, you know? Just huge. walking through a blank canvas and then from there, you give that to the designers, the stagers, and everyone else to see exactly where the furniture is going, the color of the floor is the wall color, and so they know exactly what furniture pieces to start to pull. Do you ever have, Rich, it's your turn soon, by the way, I'll answer that question. <laughs> um, do you ever have anybody, once you've presented what your quote is or what your vision is, go try to pick it apart? Like, is there is there a lot of that back and forth? And then how flexible are you with that? Do you take their input and listen? Um, or do you go, wow, this is why your house has been on the market for six months. Um, you're probably much nicer, I'm saying that. He yes, say no, that. I mean, there's some times where I'm just like, oh my gosh, what do I do? <laughs> um, and that's when I refer back to my my coaching team with HSRA, which I keep bringing up, they're amazing. So I refer back to them, I'm like, what do I do in this situation? But most of the time I can figure it out. You know, when you're calling a professional staging company, professional is in the name of your company. We're professional. Let us handle that. You know, right. you don't need to get involved because once we start having four or five people giving feedback, we're never going to get your home staged. You know, right. once one person wants that blue sofa, the other one may not. The homeowner loves a blue sofa. We love it, but the realtor and the broker hate it. You know, so, and then that's when we just don't get anything done. So we always suggest you're calling us. You know, we didn't reach out to you. You're calling my company. Let us take it from point A to Z. You know, let's do it. If you don't like it, we'll come back out and kind of fix something for you. But that's only happened with two clients, knock on wood. It's only happened, oh, knock on wood, don't wanna shake the camera. <laughs> it's only been with two clients, you know, where we've staged over about 380 homes where two of those clients haven't been happy and we explain why we did what we did and they're like, you know what, that makes sense. You know, that makes perfect sense as to why you put the sofa there, even though I don't like it there, but that's why you did it. So just that education behind it as to why we do it is huge. What if people come in and say, which I've done in model homes before, I love it all, I want every bit of it. Do it, buy it. <laughs> so that is a, that's an option. Yeah, definitely, then. that's totally an option. Okay, we do so that a you, lot. That's, okay, so talk about that, because I think that's fascinating, because for me, I would like to just walk, if I buy in the next property, <laughs> yeah, I just want to bring my clothes and my yep. toothbrush. Exactly. Uh, but I think a lot of people don't, don't realize that that might be an option yeah. for them. And honestly, with our new construction, we work with a lot of new construction builders where it happens a lot, where they look at the model home, they love it, they go to the spec home, they love our furniture, and they close the deal. So we, the way I we put it that. to our clients is, it's literally a designer coming into your property, delivering it, making it look good, and you just have to move in. So just imagine if you were coming into a property, it was vacant and you buy it, you have to go and source all the furniture pieces, run the five different stores to find the best price, the best quality of furniture, then now you have to go and find the, the decor for the right. pieces, then the pillows, which are outrageous when you buy them from a store that you guys would be buying from, Home Goods, At Home, Marshalls and stuff. So it all adds up, you know? So we do that all the time where they can just run in, love the furniture, they can even buy certain pieces if they like a piece of art, we do that a lot as well. So, I mean, once That's really we cool. do it, you can just give us a call and then we can price it out per job. Now, do you branch out at all to 
interior design because yes. you're sort of on that cusp, yes. I think. So we have a whole interior design company. We just launched that about that. a year ago. Yeah, we have an in-house designer, uh, Sue Ann. She's our operations manager and our lead stylist and our designer. So she plays a lot of roles with us. We also have another designer that works with us. She's the head of our design division. Um, so she does a lot of the design work. We have about five properties out right now that are in the design division that we work with right now. So, so we where, do you go, where do you go from here, right? So you're 18, gonna be 19. Mm -hmm. And then is your long-term goal to have multiple stores? Like talk a little bit about your future yeah, plan. Yeah, so I dream big. I mean, as you can see, I'm a very big dreamer. So where I see my company in a few years is branched out. You know, I wanna take over all of our Florida, kind of take over the whole division, which is dreaming big, you know, but. I want to dream big instead of dreaming little and then achieving it and saying, where do I go next? I want to have that long-term goal as to five, six, seven years, or hey, maybe it comes sooner, who knows? And just go out there and branch out, you know, take over all of Florida, have different hubs. Um, because with staging, like in my last video I talked about is, it's a very hard industry to get into. You know, it's a lot of moving parts, having a team behind you, making sure you can get the demand, you know, pushing out that demand so quickly and efficiently and still do a good product where it's very difficult for a mom and pop shop to kind of have a successful home staging company. Absolutely. So, and with me and the heart I have, I love helping people out. I love just branching out and helping people and doing things like that. So my vision is to buy up those little mom and pop staging companies, brand them as systematic, show them our ropes and have them be able to experience the whole staging life, you know? So that's the main thing that I want to do and brand it as systematic, but take, you know what I mean? Have systematic everywhere. I think so. that, I, I love that spirit and I love to see anybody have that spirit, but Thank certainly you. somebody at that, at your age <laughs> have that spirit because I was in, I was in college being stupid at 18, 19, um, not much has changed, but uh, I love that you know what you wanna do, you have your passion already. Uh, and I think a lot of people miss out on their passion mm -hmm. because they go a direction they think they should go. And I love the fact that you were brought up in, you have an environment that uh, encouraged you to do what yes. you felt like your passion was then and it really became, it really is your passion. Mm -hmm. No, it really people. is. Um, all right, so we're gonna share all of Joseph's contact information, how you can reach out to him, how you can use systematic yes. home <laughs> staging, uh, which you want to take a look at their social media. If you are in real estate or want some interior design work yes. done, check them out on social media. They put the pictures there that you're supposed to have, mm -hmm. and it's real, it's the, it's the real stuff that's, that absolutely has been done. It's not these fake stock photos that yes. we see a lot of. Start that's franchising, nice. Laritza says. That's probably in the. I mean, so, he'll be he'll be twenty five and he'll have ninety five stores and ninety five. Um, all right. Any parting words of wisdom for them? Anything you want to share before we head out? Make good choices. You know, just be smart. Be smart with what you do, um, and live life every day. You know, because you never know. Honestly, you never know what will come up. There may be a new opportunity for you. There may be a wall that you hit, and it's happened with my company. I, you know, I hit a brick wall with something and I was like, oh my God, I just want to give up. But supporting your group, your support groups, your people that you have behind you, how do you get over that wall? You know, so just surround yourself with good people um, and just be positive, you know, live each day as it's your last, like my dad always tells me because you never know what would happen. So awesome. thank you. All so right. thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, he's an old soul, isn't he? <laughs> he's definitely an old soul. Uh, you were awesome. Thank you so much. And again, thank we'll you. share all of Joseph's contact information. You want to reach out to him. If you are doing anything in real estate or interior design, Joseph's amazing. You can't Thank make you. this up. So I can say it, but you can go look on social media for the proof. So yes. thanks for being here. Thank on. you. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Thanks so for much. having me. We'll see you guys later. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Bye.